Welcome back, everybody. We are here with board games. In fact, uh, joining us via Skype is Brian Turtle from Endless Games. And Brian, I was just saying, it's not Christmas at Autism Live until we've had you on the show. I'm just saying. That's right. <laughs> I appreciate you having me. Oh, uh, we always love having you on. Endless Games is an amazing company with amazing board games. And everybody should check you guys out, endlessgames.com. That's right, endlessgames.com. We were also we're also on Facebook and Twitter and all of the social media sites, so they can find us on those as well. And you guys have great games. In fact, your games won a couple of awards from us this year. We have Oddly Obvious uh, won a game, and we're going to play that and just uh, won one of our awards. And so did Sleepover Party. Both of them won in the category of board games. And for Sleepover Party, it won for um, Teens and Tweens, I believe. And for Oddly Obvious, it was... Gosh, it was for um, the, no, that's the teens and tweens and school age is sleepover party. I, I always get them confused because the truth of the matter is that you could play these games with different age ranges because they were so, so fabulous. Which one do you want to play first, Brian? Um, I guess, uh, what's the, what cards are those you have in your hand? Sleepover party? I got sleepover party in my hand. And let's, let's start there. That's one of my personal favorites. I love this game, Brian. I got to play a lovely version of it this morning with a 10 year old that we had here in the office and we had such a good time and I, I cannot wait to play this with my little nieces. Um, but the truth of the matter is that this could be played with boys or girls. It's a hilarious Absolutely. game. Well, I'm glad you find it hilarious. We, um, you know, it, it can be boys or girls. We show some girls on the package. My own two daughters, Lila and Sophie Turtle, really had a lot to do with the development of this game, and uh, and 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 really, it's it's all about the fun activities and stunts and things that you would do while having a sleepover party. Although you don't necessarily have to have a sleepover party in order to play the sleepover party game. It's what the game is. Okay. It's basically it's a big spinner, and three categories: act it, work it, and party. And those categories have different card decks from Work It, Act It, and then my party deck here. And much to your point before about the functional pretend and imaginative pretend, a lot of what Sleepover Party is features uh, both of those and, and more. Uh, for example, this would be uh, a Work It card if, if we spun the spinner and landed on Work It. This is more of the... Um, Kind of, kind of more physical challenge. -y. This one here says, um, "Pretend you are using a yo-yo. Show everyone your fanciest yo-yo trick." So now I have to sort of pretend that I've got a yo-yo in my hand, and then showcase my walk the dog or around the world, and show everyone my yo-yo trick with an imaginary yo-yo. So a lot of that imaginary play is right there in that example. Absolutely uh, love this. I think it's so super clever and it's easy to play. This isn't one of those games that you, and this is a hallmark of your games. This isn't a game where it takes three hours to set it up and 17 minutes to read the directions and then lots of discussion. This was, we, we, you know, we sat down and played this game really quickly and, and had such a good time. And, right. and it's, it's a game that could be over in a very short period of time, because you only have to play to 10 points, although it's the kind of game where you end up playing several times because it's so much fun. Yeah, and you know, I know you just mentioned previously about being a risk player while you were in college. Yeah. Uh, the thing about what we do at Endless Games is, as much as I enjoy a good game of risk myself, we like to just jump right into the fun. We don't want to have a long list of instructions. It's really basic and simple, especially something like Sleepover Party. You spin the spinner, you draw the card corresponding to that uh, portion of the spinner that you land on, and then there are point values on the cards. So, like you just said, you're trying to score 10 points before your opponents, but like a lot of other games that we produce at Endless Games, we find that it's it's less about the winner and loser. It's more about the journey than the destination. 
Yeah. There was a moment when I started playing. So I said I was playing with a 10 year old this morning who's neurotypical. I'm just going to say that. And we started and she drew her first card and it was that she had to be hosting her own cooking show and do a demonstration of how she makes her famous peanut butter sandwich. And there was a little moment where she was like, oh, I don't, I don't know. And like she, you know, there was a little moment of, I'm not sure I know how to do that. And I said, well, let's just pretend and it will be okay no matter what you do and gave her permission. And then it was a hoot. It was That's a great. total hoot. You know, she made the sandwich and at one point she put jam and she was like, oh, you know, she had this pretend sandwich and she put peanut butter and then she put jam and she said, oh no, I put it on the same piece that had the peanut butter. And I said, hey, we're pretending it's all good. And that kind of play, you guys, our kids need that so bad instead of constantly being on the phone or the iPad. Oh gosh, don't even get me started on that tangent. The, yeah. the screen time, we, we need less and less screen time. It's, it's important to have the human connection that you experience while playing a board game. Uh, just to, to, to your point about maybe there's some mild intimidation when you have to do a pretend something or other on the card. The party category is great to sort of counterbalance that because in the party category, these are cards that involve usually the whole group and so everybody's now doing the activity. This one here is uh, hold hands with every player and do the wave in a circle three times. So now everyone gets up and we do the wave around the room and uh, or keep an invisible beach ball in the air for, for 20 hits. So this element of it does take away from that intimidation of, of your, your own individual performances or individual challenges, the party cards. So that's another, another way to sort of lessen any type of anxiety. Absolutely. And we know in the autism world that modeling behavior is a great way to teach something and uh, what's socially acceptable. And so the first time that I drew a card, my card was that I had to tell a story to explain how my parents use our pet snail to mow the lawn. And, and, and this young lady, she looked at me and she was like, oh, I don't know how you're going to do that. And then I launched into the story, which was very silly. And you could tell that the little wheels were moving. And she was like, oh, so it's totally OK to make stuff up. So that by the time we got to her next challenge, where she had to order her meal at a restaurant as if she was a monkey, you know, she totally went for it. These That's are it. the kinds of things that our kids need. This is, mm -hmm. you know, honestly, um, all kids need this, neurotypical and otherwise, but our kids on the spectrum need this even more. These are the kinds of skills, being able to just jump in and do something in the moment. If you think about it, think about how much of a difference that would make at a job interview. Somebody who's able to look at something, identify it and go, okay, I'm just going to jump in here. It's a good thing. This is a great game and it will keep everybody involved because there's always something that's going to happen. And it's so fun when mom and dad can be silly. That's right. It's great to, to get silly with the, the kids and show them that it's cool when you get silly too. In fact, uh, one of uh, my coworkers at Endless Games, Linnea Ciaccio, loves to play this game and she's always the most animated and wants to tell the funniest story. And so my kids love to show up and, and see what kind of crazy wild activity or zany stunt uh, my friend Lenan will want to do when we play sleepover party. So and it's, you never it's know what you're going to get. You never know what, you but you never know. You never know. It's great. But for parents, the great thing about this is I love your, your games are always well packaged and boxed. So the games are really sturdy. It's a great spinner. It will take you three seconds to unbox it. You can play. And then when it's time to pack it up, this is a part of the lesson that we do for our kids on the spectrum is that they have to help pack it up and your games pack up so easily. It's three decks of cards and a board. You're not going to yep. be sorting through the different denominations of money. You're not That's picking right. up the little houses off the right. floor for an hour, right? It just packs up and it's easy. Well, you do. There is always that issue of the game's over, everybody leaves the dining room table and mom or dad is left to clean it up. So this one's it. A nice one where everyone chips in and it's cleaned up lickety split and you can move on to uh, 
maybe playing around of oddly obvious. And I exactly, which is what we're gonna do. <laughs> oh, my box just made a noise. Uh, I love <laughs> that. That was impolite. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, we do that on purpose too. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I want to say t for our autism parents, don't be stuck at the table packing it up. Make the kids help. That's good for them to learn to pack up their toys. Okay, so now, and we've talked about oddly obvious before because I love this game. For our kids especially, we know that um, a lot of times they have trouble with double entendres and um, things that have double meaning and they can mistake something. You know, there are books written about this, about how they look at language as being very concrete. But I don't know if you know this, CARD was involved in a study. They did a study about teaching um, children how to understand this kind of language and taught that it absolutely can be taught. And one of the keys to it is giving them lots of opportunities and making it reinforcing. So mm -hmm. what we have here is oddly obvious, which is everything that you would want for that in a box. We absolutely love this game. So tell us a little bit about how we play this. Okay. So it's, it's, um, three decks of, uh, of cards like this that, that feature a lot of words in, in various orientations. And sometimes the fonts are different and, and, and just a, a whole answer bank in front of everyone playing the game. So if I'm the host, it actually comes with a little card stand, but I, I usually like to just hold the card up myself so that I can sort of show people in their face as they want to see it. In any case, What's on the back of the card, which I don't want to read off, which reveal too fast, so I'll show you all the answers, but that's where all the clues are. And so as the card reader, I have the clues to read aloud, and then those playing will have to be the first to shout out the answer from the word bank from the front of the card. So, for example, you're, you're now on the clock. Jen. Okay, all right. If I'm, I say, I'm looking and, at the card. And, an ironic place to store plates to store plates. Right. Where would where would it oh, seem ironic to store my plates? Gosh. Well, cupboard would be the easy answer. But well, wouldn't that be ironic since it says cup? Oh, so is it cupboard? It is in fact cupboard. Okay. Cupboard with cup being the first word. How about this one? Okay. Uh, entirely too happy. Entirely too happy. Overjoyed. That's right. Okay. Okay. Uh, international timeout. International timeout. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm not necessarily good at this. Is that nonstop? No, that's peace. Peace. Because, oh, oh international, international timeout. timeout. Okay, great. All right. Here's a. This is a very clever play on words. Here, the clue is insanity plea. Locomotive. That's right, because loco being crazy and motive being a reason for your plea. So locomotive, insanity plea. And here's a fun one I like. Half its time spent waiting a turn. Half its time spent waiting a turn. My gosh. Is that nonstop? No, oh, pancake. It's pancake. pancake. That's what it is. Half on one side and then flip it over. Of and course it is. And so, see, th these hurt your head a little bit, but you know, because right. I'm like, which one, which one? But you know, I find that when we play this around the dining room table, and this is a game that we play regularly around the dining room table, it leads to discussion about mm -hmm. why. Even if he, if, and we played this years ago with Jem, and his vocabulary is great now, but we played it even when his vocabulary wasn't great. And sometimes we would give a hint and we would say, because all the, the things on the card are different colors, and we would say, um, it's one of the bigger words, or we would say it's right. one of the blue words because there's two blue words. And then he would kind of have to reason it out. And even if he didn't understand it afterwards, just like you just did for me, we would explain to him, no, because you know how you turn a pancake over half the time? This is so good for our kids' brains. It's, so it's good. good for kids' and adults' brains because the, sometimes the, the clues are so clever that when you have that kind of uh, V8 moment of, aha, I can't believe that. <laughs> right. And I, and, and I want to show you one of my, my personal favorites right on the box cover. Uh -huh. um, it will be below the oddly obvious logo 
and we have clues on the back of the package, so you can play the box. Okay, I love that. All right, so my my all-time favorite, what really kind of hooked us to make this game in the first place at Endless Games, was the clue. It's one of the words below the logo, and the clue is Army Animal. Army Animal. Army Animal. My gosh, I'm so not good at this. Is that the octopus? It is because an octopus has eight arms. Therefore, it's army. Oh, army, so it's, army. It's right, Instead because of... everybody's mind is going military, army. Right. But you have to think, well, how else could army be a word? And there's another one in there about cob. When you think corn on the cob, the clue has to do with an ear or the inner ear being corn on the cob. So oh, my goodness. Just... It yeah, it's really clever. forces you to be flexible with your thinking. These are mm -hmm. the kinds of things that people are talking about right now for elderly people to make sure that you, you know, stay fresh and that you don't uh, end up having dementia and those kinds of things that it helps. Um, but with our kids, this teaches flexibility and it can be so fun. You know what else it teaches too? Because you're never going to get 100% of them. You're just not. Some of them are harder than others. And I, you know, I remember one of the things when, when Jem would see that I got stumped and couldn't get one, and then dad would explain it to me and I'd go, oh, of course. And he yeah. would see it was okay not to get it the first time. Great mm -hmm. lesson to teach a kid. And, and very and, fun. And also, one other point to that is that what, what happened in our house was my daughter and I were playing it and then days later, maybe we were watching a football game and, and Minnesota was playing. And I could see sort of like you, you often uh, talk about the wheels turning. And I could see my daughter, Lila, thinking about Minnesota, Minnesota. And then she came out and said to me, Dad, I have a good, oddly obvious clue for your next version of that game. The clue is Little Pepsi. I love it. Minnesota. Minnesota. I love it. That's uh -huh. a great, it's great for flexible thinking. So Brian, we're almost out of time. Are there any other games that you particularly, uh, cause these are the two that we featured in our yeah. toy guide. Is there anything else you want to bring up? Yeah. I wanted to show this one here called out of order. This is brand new at endless games this year. And this is a game where you have different, uh, movie titles, song titles, book titles, and a plastic console where you slowly reveal one by one different clues as you go from completely obscure to totally obvious, where you would try to uh, crack the code and unscramble and identify a movie title, a book title, a TV show, and uh, put things that are out of order back into order. So My husband would love that one. All of these are available, and uh, you can read up and watch videos and, and learn more about them at EndlessGames.com. And, uh, of course, by all means, we encourage everyone to go to the, their local toy and game store and look for these. And if that particular store doesn't carry them, tell them to contact Endless Games and we'll correct that problem. Absolutely. These are awesome games. And, Brian, please give our love to everybody there at Endless Games. We just love you guys. You do an amazing job. And you had two winners on our um, toy and gift guide. We just love Sleepover Party and Oddly Obvious, which is not to say that we don't love the rest of your games because you make great games. Right. These were just two stellars this year that we had to acknowledge. So thank yeah. you and have happy holidays. Happy holidays to you too. We're proud to be a part of it.